course, most people starting out don't want to invest the money setting up a chicken farm this size before they even know if they like it. A good place to start is your own backyard. Michelle Paget and Scott Morgan live in Midtown Savannah. They invited me over to check out their coop they built in their own backyard. They keep it small and simple to handle. But living in the city has a very different set of complications. Um, well, I know in some places in the country there are legal problems that uh, people have to, legal hurdles people have to uh, jump over to be able to have chickens, but here it's their pets. It's perfectly legal for us to have up to five birds. Uh, we can't have a rooster though because we're too close to the neighbors. And I guess that's our biggest problem uh, with raising chickens in the city is space. I mean, we just have a little yard and chickens require a lot of grazing space. Um, so if we were out in the country, they'd be able to roam more and we'd be able to have a rooster to protect them. But um, as it is, we've just got our little setup here. So what advice would you give to someone who just wants to set up chickens for the first time in their backyard? Uh, I would not underestimate the existence and tenacity of the predators that exist in your area. Learn about what eats chickens and what's around because we had no idea how many possums, raccoons, hawks, etc. were going to come around. Even cats were pawing underneath the coop and unloosed uh, one of the wooden planks and ate one of the chicks before we had time to uh, stop it. So you just never know what is hungry for a chick or a chicken. So learn about how you can uh, keep them safe. So Michelle, tell me, how do you keep your chickens safe? Um, well, that's probably the most important thing that we've had to deal with um, because it turns out everything eats chickens. Um, we keep them enclosed in the pen at night. We um, close them up in a coop so raccoons and possums don't get them. Um, during the day, hawks are a problem and we've strung um, fishing line in sort of a web overhead to keep the hawks from coming down into the pen to get them. Um, but That's helped? Yes, it did. We haven't had any hawk attacks since we strung up the fishing line, so that's good news, but we'll see. It's like an arms race. Um, every time you fix a problem, uh, the predators find a way through it or the chickens find a way out of it, so it's, um, it's like a game. <laughs> Scott shares some advice on how to make a low-cost pen for the first time. Well, um, there are a lot of potential designs. There's no need to reinvent the wheel unless you want to. I mean, you can get online and, and there's all kinds of designs from having no money to wanting to spend $500 on a fence and a coop. But uh, we bought our coop for $200 and we um, originally just had this chicken wire here and some of these wooden planks. Uh, but then they were getting under the wire, and so then we did the pallets. Now they're getting over the wire. We've got one or two that are actually still able to fly, even though we've clipped their wings. So we're going to actually raise it up with more uh, chicken wire, just a little bit higher, and hopefully that'll quell them. <laughs> Michelle goes on to tell us what breed she recommends for beginners. Um, there is a website, I think it's um, mybackyardchicken.com or backyardchickens.com or something. They'll go through the whole breeds and they'll tell you which breeds are aggressive and which breeds are friendly and which breeds lay eggs better. Uh, this is Goldie and she is a Wheaton Americana, which is um, a breed of chicken that lays blue eggs. So we're very excited about her. And this breed is, tends to be very calm, very docile. Um, there are Others that are a little more aggressive, some of ours are just not friendly at all, um, but as you can see, Goldie's a sweet girl. So I would say do your research. If you want a friendly chicken, you can get them that you can pet and dress up and paint their nails. <laughs> Raising chickens inside a city sometimes has some unintended side effects. Failed farmers tend to dump their chickens in the government parks here in Savannah. People have been dumping their birds for about three years now here in Daffin Park. It didn't take long for these feral fowl to take full advantage of their new environment. What I found fascinating was just how fast these chickens went from domesticated birds back to their wild ways. In just a few generations, these chickens could protect themselves and even flourished. The wild chickens have done well fitting in with the community. They contribute by keeping the bug population down, eating the scrub, and even fertilizing part of the yard. 
but mostly it's entertainment value. People just really enjoy seeing chickens when they go out for their walk, and they become much loved in the community. I'm even told that some breeds of chickens need very little care and take care of themselves. Chickens like jungle fowl and bantams will actually fly up to trees at night and protect themselves. Seeing these wild chickens survive here shows you just how tough they really are. But don't be fooled. Most breeds will do very poorly if you leave them on their own. I hope you enjoyed that. Just remember, this is a segment out of a full documentary. If you want to watch the whole documentary, all you have to do is click right here, and you can see it in its entirety. Also, don't forget to stop by terranlupo.com. I have up videos that you can't see anywhere else. Currently, I have one on carnivorous plants and also how to make your own mead. All you have to do is go over and sign up at terranlupo.com, and all that's free. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe.